With the 67th pick in the 2020 NFL Draft, the Detroit Lions select edge rusher out of Notre Dame, Julian Okora. Why do they do it? I'm here to tell you. This is Game Within a Game. Let's get it started. This offseason, the Detroit Lions decided to sign a linebacker, Jamie Collins, to a three-year, $30 million deal. Now, Jamie Collins is a guy that gives the Detroit Lions a little bit of a different aspect in the linebacker group that they really haven't had before with Matt Patricia. He gives them a veteran that can help mentor some of the other younger linebackers that are there. Guys like Jelani Tavai, guys like Jared Davis, now Reggie Ragland, some of those players. And he also gives them a different aspect in the linebacker group, a guy that can drop back into coverage, a guy that's versatile, a guy that can blitz, a guy that fits right into the Patriots system and he's had success success there and in a must win year for Matt Patricia and Bob Quinn it was a very smart move to make this signing again this is a veteran player and Detroit Lions spent roughly 10 million dollars a year on bringing in Jamie Collins then just a little bit later they decided to release their team captain from the year before in Devon Kennard now this was a head scratching move at the time I personally didn't understand why they released him later rumors came out that Detroit Lions tried to trade him nothing came through so they ended up just releasing him now looking back it's probably because they wanted to get some more money back signing Jamie Collins to a three-year $30 million deal so they wanted to save some money so they could use that towards depth or any other needs they had to fill throughout free agency and to sign their rookie class. Speaking of the rookie class, the Detroit Lions had a little bit of a hole to fill at that edge rusher position after losing on Devon Kennard, who was one of their sack leaders for the last two seasons, a guy that Matt Patricia brought in for his first year from the New York Giants, a guy that's been one of our reliable pass rushers that had, has had consistent seven sack seasons, and the Detroit Lions just released him. You just released a team captain, so there's definitely a little bit of a hole to fill when the rest of your linebacker group is, you know, I would say a little bit inconsistent. And the Detroit Lions went in the draft, and in the third round with pick number 67, the Detroit Lions selected the edge rusher out of Notre Dame, the brother of Romeo Okwara, Julian Okwara. Julian Okwara was a very intriguing prospect to a lot of people. One of those guys that some people believed was a first round type of talent that was just going to fall because maybe injury concerns or inconsistency when it comes to statistics. But as you watch Julian Okwara, you can see the potential is there and you can see the crazy athleticism that he has that a lot of people were really interested in. They thought that, hey, this guy could be a top pick if it wasn't for any of these injuries. Uh, you know, these stats just looked a little bit better, more consistently. This guy would be a first round pick. Pro Football Focus actually believed this guy would go in the first round at pick number 27 to the Seattle Seahawks, but he ended up falling all the way into the third round. The Detroit Lions were able to snag Romeo Okora's brother, which on its own is definitely a good thing because, you know, they can live together and help each other out when it comes to playbooks and things like that. All right, it, it, it'd be cool. I was telling, I think I answered this question earlier. Um, I told him I'd move in with him on the couch, that he's, he's going to have to pay the rent, and I'm not splitting it either. Um, he's going to have to take care of everything because I'm the younger brother, and that's what you know, older brothers do. They take care of their younger brother. So um, it'd be cool. Um, whatever team picks me up, it'd be cool to play with him. I've always wanted to play with him, so it'd be an honor. The Detroit Lions released Devon Kennard, who was a 6'3", 260-pound edge rusher who was previously a team captain. So they had a little bit of a hole to fill, and they may have just done that with Julian Okwara, the rookie, who is 6'4", 252 pounds. Now, Julian Okwara is not the same size. He's a little bit smaller than Devon Kennard, but he may be the direct replacement for Devon Kennard in year one. This is a player that's definitely going to help out with that pass rusher position and he's most likely to me going to bump Jamie Collins to the inside linebacker position with a guy like Jelani Tavai helping Matt Patricia's scheme at a higher level something that he did with the New England Patriots. But speaking about Julian Okwara this is a player that's very intriguing and he has a lot of great things and a couple of things that you know you shake your head and you're just like oh he needs to get better there but for the Lions system he looks like an, act an absolute steal and when you take a look at Julian Okwara he shows you a lot of things just make you shake your head and say wow this is a very very talented player. One thing that he does very well is he uses his hands. This is something that a lot of guys his size at the pass rusher position must do. When you are Julian Okwara's size and you're going against some big offensive tackles, you need to do a couple of things differently than some, you know, pure defensive ends, especially when you play in a scheme like Matt Patricia's. You have to be able to have moves. You have to have moves that you can reliably go to and not just strictly bull rush or not just strictly swim move. You have to have different things that you can mix in and incorporate to keep the offensive tackle guessing because you're not just going 
going to strictly overpower him with your size. You also need to be able to get pressure without just jumping a snap. Jumping the snap count is one way to get pressure, but if that's the only way you're getting pressure is by just guessing the snap count in college, that's always a red flag because by beating the offensive tackle or getting by an offensive lineman, instead he's mainly just getting there because he's timing up a snap here and there, and it makes his stats look a little bit better. And another big con that you must look for is no use of hands. This is something that Julian Okora has to utilize being a smaller pass rusher. The use of hands is very important when you're not a bigger pass rusher because you're probably not going to just run over a tackle, so you need to be able to use your hands to make some different moves to get by an offensive lineman to eventually get to the quarterback and cause some havoc. And that's something that Julian Okora does very well. He is able to use his hands very well when it comes to the swipe move, or as many people know, the club move. As you guys can see here, he's able to use the club move to get by an offensive tackle very, very quickly. And that's something that really helps him out is the utilization of his hands. And it's something that really pops out to you when you watch Julian Aquarius. He always has active hands, which allows him to have a better chance to get past the offensive lineman. He also has some versatility that Devon Kennard also gave us. Devon Kennard was a guy that could play in multiple different stances. He could jump on the line. He could jump back into a two-point stance. He could do a lot of different things with his size that you know Matt Patricia liked, and that's why he brought him in for his first year. But we see the same things with Julio Quar, his ability to drop back in the two-point stance to stand up, his ability to drop in coverage, which is something that's very impressive. This is something that not a lot of coaches even trust their edge rushers to do. They simply just go to the quarterback. Having trust in your edge rusher to at least a drop back and somewhat help in the pass game is huge. That allows them to drop back into a spy. That allows them to drop back and cover running back. And that is huge from the edge rusher position because it gives you a different aspect to his game. And you know he's not just consistently just going to be running straight to the quarterback. There's going to be that threat that he could also back up into coverage and potentially make some plays there as well. When you look at some of his cons though, you will see there are a few of them. One of his cons is a false step. Now this is something that you will see a few times for Julian Aquara and it's kind of like a little hiccup, almost like a little rocking motion that causes him to be a little late off his release. He doesn't necessarily get upfield as quickly and he's usually not too involved in the play when he has this problem. He's able to stay low and, and keep leverage when going against an offensive lineman. This is something that if you go back and watch Devon Kennard, you could see that at times he was a very high player. And you will see times when you watch Julian Aquara's tape that sometimes he does stand straight up. But when he stands straight up, he's basically out of the play because again, he's not bigger than the offensive lineman. He's most likely not going to overpower him. So losing leverage right away is a big, big con and it kind of takes him out of the play. We saw this at times with Devon Kennard. And while he may not be as consistent as Devon Kennard is right now, he does have one thing that Devon Kennard does it. And that's the crazy athletic ability. There are times where he will literally flash off of your screen because of his crazy athletic ability off of the edge, whether that's getting around a tackle, whether that's playing a pursuit, whether that's just making a huge play, whatever that may be, his athleticism will pop off the screen too. He's able to stay with the play. And uh, that's something that you just can't teach. You know, Devon Kennard may have been more consistent because, you know, he was used to playing in the NFL, but a guy like Juno Quare has something that you cannot teach. And that's that athletic ability that as much as that Matt Patricia can teach him the other things, but he can't teach him to be as talented as he is and have that crazy athletic ability that he does. Is he's able to convert some of that quick speed off the edge into power. Now, this is something that you'll see a few times when he does overpower an offensive tackles because he has that quick speed and he's able to accelerate very quickly and he's able to translate that speed into power. And that enables him to push an offensive lineman back. It really does all come down to leverage. And when an offensive lineman loses leverage because Julian Aquara is able to stay low and he's able to explode off of the football, he's able to overpower offensive lineman there. So even though he may not look like the biggest edge rusher because he's not, he's able to overpower his offensive tackle at times because of his great technique to be able to convert that speed and that acceleration into power right into the offensive tackle. And the great thing that you will see about Juno Quare is that he can mix this up. At one he will be a guy that's that can consistently try to overpower you and then he'll come back with some kind of other counter, whether that when trying to sweep through, trying to convert a spin move, whatever it may be, Julian Okora will mix things up to keep the offensive tackle guessing. And once he finds something that he likes, he will continue to go to it until the offensive tackle starts to adjust. And once the offensive tackle adjusts, he's able to bounce back and switch up his moves and then make the offensive lineman pay because he's not in position to stop him. He has an extreme ability to bend around the edge. Now, this is something that, again, comes back to athletic ability. Once he gets to step on an offensive tackle around the edge, when you're pushed out too far, that's what offensive tackles are looking to do. They're looking to push you basically out of the play backwards, but he has great bend and he has terrific bend to be able to grab at least to get an angle so that he is not completely pushed out of the play where he's able to get back into the play and try to collapse the pocket from the outside. That's something that you'll see that's really impressive when you watch Julian Aquara. However, getting back to some of his cons, I'm sucked into the run. And when he is sucked into the run, you could tell because basically the whole side opens up. And that's been one of his struggles consistently. If you look at 
guys statistically or even just watch him that's not exactly what we're going to need him to do sure you have to be able to help against the run because at the edge rusher position they will run to your way and it's going to be important to be able to set that edge and he's not the best at it and that's why he's not the perfect prospect right there are some concerns not only does he have injuries and not only is his production not always consistent but he also is you know pretty much average at stopping the run but his ability to get to the quarterback consistently his ability to win against offensive tackles and his athletic ability is what sets him apart from a lot of pass rushing prospects and potentially may have set him apart from what De what Devon Kennard is. Matt Patricia sees what Julian Okora can be, but he knows what Devon Kennard was and what he probably will be at his peak. He probably already hit a ceiling with the Detroit Lions. If you look at Devon Kennard, he had his best two seasons when he went to the Detroit Lions from the New York Giants. One year with the Giants, he didn't even come up with a single sack. So Matt Patricia can make that position look really, really good. And if you've got a guy that's as athletic as, Jul as Julian Okora to play that Jack role and replace him, you could potentially be looking at big numbers in the future for Julian Okora. So that is exactly why we selected him. Let me hear your thoughts, comments below. Thank you for watching, and I'm out.